Today, we're um, going to do some very tactical thing or a very tactical thing in writing a hiring ad. This is one of my favorite, favorite things we do in that um, it's like magic. Uh, we help folks that have the trouble getting people to call or come in or the right people to call and come in. And this one change uh, makes a huge, huge difference. All right, let's jump in. Um, the first thing I want to kind of go over really quickly because it's fun and you guys will all be like, holy crap, this dude has been reading my hiring ad. Um, I will give you, I will read you your hiring ad, every single one of you, without having ever met you or seeing your hiring ad online. It typically almost always goes, um, hey, you know, fast growing cleaning company, looking for high energy, motivated people, paid training, good benefits, vacation, great fast growing team, apply here now, uh, flexible hours, you know, something like that, which is super boring. And it's the exact same ad that every single person writes. So um, anyone have an ad that sounds anything like that? Or my, this is my complete first new thing. Um, Kate Trish is like, I ain't scared. I'll tell you. Yeah, mine sounds exactly like that, Becky. <laughs> These are, the problem is, at this, some version that's what everybody has so the only way people can choose give a give a guess so if ever ad sounds some version of that terrible ad what do they have to choose on where are they going to go any guesses tracy gave me the hand motion which is perfect anyone else want to guess yeah she's giving me the money it is of course money so there's just gonna be money that's the last thing we want to hire people on right so of course we coach y'all to pay fairly right the goal is not to trick people into working for slave wages or anything like that but tracy suzanne jackson all the people on our team um, we certainly do our best to pay them fair or slightly better than fair um and more to just be part of our core values right if our core values are have fun make money be real and help out and i try and screw my people and <laughs> obviously that's not fun for them it's not gonna make me money screw my people it's not gonna make them their money working for free um it's certainly not being real and it's not it's not gonna it's just it violates our core values so but they are here pr predominantly for our core values and what we share and the mission that we're on together, not for the money, right? And obviously we pay them. So the point isn't try not to pay your people. The point is don't give, if I just put in top money, best money, 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 everyone would be here for that. And then when I'm like, hey, Tracy, we're gonna do this five day challenge. She'd be like, well, how much does it pay? And what's my time? And how much extra can I get? And blah, 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 as opposed to Tracy, who's amazing going, I can't wait for the opportunity to serve our people. And uh, of course, we'll work out pay to make sure it's fair for everybody. But I'm so excited to serve. Hopefully you guys can hear in Suzanne's voice. There is a type of person that shows up and is like, Mike has given me money. I will be here to get the money. I will do my job and then I will go home. That's not Suzanne. She's super excited. Like you can see the energy just like flowing off of her serving. Right. So really important that um, we have an ad that makes sense. So if your ad is the same as everyone else, the only way they can make decisions is based on money. The last reason you want people coming to you is for money. Um, OK, so we got that down. Let's talk about why a core values based ad. So the two things people usually kind of put in their ad is money and skill, right? I, you know, I want someone that's really good at cleaning. That's the best at cleaning. Um, one of the nice things is we're not in the brain surgery business, right? If I have someone that is going to cut open my skull, fiddle with my brain, hopefully put everything back together again. I'm really interested in his ability to do that job. <laughs> I don't want the, the guy's like first skull cracked, right? I'd like to be his 10,000th. Uh, well, I'd like to not be in that situation at all, but if I had to be on that, I'd like to be a guy that's been around the block a couple of times. When it comes to cleaning, one of the beautiful things about our business is if we do a bad job, <laughs> unless we really screw up, nobody's going to die. If someone dies based on your cleaning, you've really done a poor job. This is not this class is not for you. I don't think I can help you. Um, so the beautiful thing is, if we have a core values match, we can train anyone to clean. OK, so we want to get away from we want the best cleaners to we want people that are core values match that are willing to clean. OK. Um, just like we talked about earlier with you guys thinking, oh, I'm the magic, I'm the magic cleaner. I'm a special cleaner. My cleaning is special and everybody wants exactly that. That's great if you want to have a cleaning job and be the only one doing it. 
But if you want something that really can affect thousands of people or hundreds of people, we need to be able to teach other people to do it fairly easily, right? So again, McDonald's is not the best burger, but they probably brought, brought the most <laughs> pounds of fat and joy to uh, humans on this earth when it comes to selling hamburgers. And it's not because they have the best hamburger, it's because they have a system and they can get this, they can get an effective hamburger out over and over and over again. So we are gonna move our, core, our um, ads away from cleaning and away from pay. And we're gonna talk almost exclusively about core values so if god forbid you hired me to clean and i agreed to clean in your building or your your home you know in your place for 12 bucks whatever your pay is right um i'm just going to be totally honest here you can ask my wife um if you want verification i am the worst cleaner right i'll just tell you i suck at cleaning i own a whole company that teaches people how to do the worst i would be sad but if I accepted the job and your core values were have fun, make money, be real and help out. And my core values are have fun, make money, be real and help out. I would do a great job for you. So I, a, I wouldn't accept the job, but that's okay. If I did accept the job, it's not super fun for me to do a crappy job, right? If I take your money and I go do a lousy job and the people are complaining and you're yelling at me and I'm trying to, that's not fun for anybody involved. I know I'm not gonna, <laughs> gonna make any money anyway because I'm a cleaner, but the most money I'm gonna be able to make is if I'm a good cleaner, right? So I would do my best to do a good job with my limited skill set, sucking at cleaning, but being super committed to having fun and super committed to being making money, I would do a good job cleaning. Also be real, right? I would tell you, hey man, hey Brian, I promise you, you put me out there with a rag, I'll follow the training that you do, I'll do the best that I can, man. If I'm being real, I wouldn't lie to you about that. And the last thing is to help out, right? Certainly if I've got a partner, that's one of the things we train is partner cleaning. Um, it's not fair to him or her if I do a crap job and expect them to pick up my slack and it's not fair to you. So because we're a core values match, me, who I'm guessing would be bottom, 10 percentile cleaner of all time um, would still be a good hire because I'm a cleaning match. Now let's look at reverse. Let's take Chrissy. She's the opposite of me. She's the best cleaner in the world, but not a core values match. Okay. She's like, you got that right. Muchumbo. She's like, I thought you were going to pick on me. This is great. Oh, I'm coming girl. Don't you wait. Don't you worry. Um, so she's the best cleaner in the whole wide world. She's a 10 out of 10, but clean better than all you people. Um, but she's not a core values match. So she's not real and she's dishonest with me periodically. I'll be there at five o'clock, Mike. You can trust me. And then she doesn't because she's not real. Come on, Chrissy. So if she's the best cleaner in the world, but she's not real, I can't trust her. She's not fun. You know, every cleaner I put with her is like, yeah, Chrissy kicks butt. She does a great job cleaning, but holy crap, she drives me nuts. She just, I can't talk, I can't joke. She's like, bah, right? Um, she doesn't care about making money. So she doesn't care if I make money, if the customer makes money, if the, the team, she doesn't care about any of that. She doesn't have fun. She won't help anyone, right? She's like, I did exactly my 50% of my, look at her now, she's, I love it. She's owning it. She's like, dang right, I ain't helping nobody. Um, even though she's the best cleaner in the world, if she's not willing to help anyone, she doesn't care about me, the client, herself, her team making money. She won't help anyone out. She's not real with me. And she's kind of putting up a, a fake front. Can you, you guys understand how Mike, the terrible cleaner, but good core values match would be an excellent hire, but poor Chrissy, who's just so sweet, putting up with my nonsense, um, could be, is the perfect cleaner, but is not a core values match and would be a, a tough hire. Is everyone get that? Because if we don't get that big concept, none of this stuff's going to make sense. And you might as well stick with your fast growing cleaning company looking for self-motivated, energetic people, paid training, blah, blah, blah. Like I'm, I'm even saying it is boring. Okay. So the beauty of a core values based ad is it is going to do two things. It is going, well, it's going to repel on a track, but no one should have no thoughts. Okay. So when I read the boring, fast growing cleaning company, looking for highly energetic and motivated people, pay training, blah, 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 the same thing that you guys have all had, like it almost say verbatim, even though I've never seen your ad. That is not, no one's going to have a strong feeling about that, right? You might get people that are just clicking apply like all the time, click apply for yours, but then they're going to move on and have no thoughts good or bad, right? No one's going to be offended by it. No one's like, how dare you have a fast growing, energetic, blah, blah, blah. No one's going to like get upset with you. Fine. No one's going to get fired up. They're just going to apply, 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 or more likely ignore, 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 right? Unless they're desperate and hitting apply for everything, which isn't who we want. <laughs> Spoiler alert, right? Um, so the good news about a core values ad is not only is it going to get the people that click apply to really go, holy crap, I actually want this. This job is exciting to me. It's not just apply, apply, apply. It's, I hope these guys with this ad call me back. Equally important 
the Chrissy, I'm just going to keep picking on Chrissy because she got such a sweet spirit about it. The Chrissy's of the world are going to go have fun, make money. How dare they work is serious. And I don't care about any. And she's never going to darken my doorstep. All right. So not only is it going to attract the right people at a much higher level, right? As opposed to just a bunch of people that hit apply. And then we reach out to them like, huh, what? Who's this? No, I don't want what you're selling. You're like, you applied for a job and they they just don't remember. They're like, oh my gosh, is this that ad? And the people that are not a good fit aren't going to muddy up the works, right? Or they still might, but it's going to be a much, much smaller percentage. Okay. So they're going to go from click, 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 or ignore, 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 ignore to, oh, I remember that ad. I hope that's the ad. The whole funnel has to be core values based. So when I show you the ad and the, the sample and we teach you how to make your own, you're going to be really excited and really proud of your new ad because it's going to be a crap ton more effective. People calling in are going to be really excited about your ad, right? Because the beautiful thing about hiring like Tracy and Suzanne, they're pretty talented. They could get a job anywhere. Right? They're not like, oh, thank you, Mike, for you know taking me on. I'm sure there are many other people that would want their skills. So the minimum standard for them is for me to treat them nicely and appreciative and whatever, because they got other, they got better options, right? Um, For better or for worse, the reality with cleaners is oftentimes they've had a string of crappy minimum wage or near minimum wage jobs, right? So like if I was like, Tracy, shut up, sit down, do some mindset coaching. If you've been with me for three months, then maybe I'll learn your first name. She would stay with me maybe to the end of that sentence, maybe, right? Um, but because of the people that we hire, oftentimes minimum wage people are not treated that way. And there is a lot of like, well, the turnover, I'll well, pick on Chrissy because she's still here. Uh, well, Chrissy, you're new. Everyone always quits and sucks. So you know, show up and do a good job for a month. And then maybe I'll talk to you. Right. Cause I'm just expecting everyone to crap out. And if you're not doing that, God forbid you are the vast majority of jobs before that have sit down, shut up, do the work. Right. So the good news is when you have a core values based system, they're going to feel very special right off the bat. So here's the risk. If you put out a really good core values based ad and they're like, Oh, this is what I've been looking for, right? Because if, and again, I'm using my core values of have fun, make money, be real and help out. We're going to show you how to get your core values. But when you do a core values based ad and someone that could, well, now we'll just be nice to Chrissy. So say Chrissy is about having fun, making money, being real, and helping out. She's been kicked around with a bunch of crappy jobs of people that didn't treat her well and just sit down, shut up and do your work um, and try not to get fired. When she comes here, a little tiny bit of hope comes up in her heart. Oh, I could have fun at work. I don't have to be this big fake person. I could, I could be real. They'll actually appreciate me for what I do. And again, she's been beat up. So as humans, when we get beat up, we, we get scared, right? So a little part of her is like, oh, could this be real? And then, so she's in a very vulnerable position, right? Maybe she hits apply and she's almost afraid to get excited because she's been burned before where someone said, oh, this job's gonna be great. We're gonna treat you great. You're gonna be amazing. And then on day one, she gets in like, fill out this paperwork, go sit in that dark closet, watch six hours of videos and I'm busy right now. I'll talk to you later. She's like, oh, I thought, I thought this is gonna be different. And it's just the same shitty job I had before. So it's really important if when we have this amazing core values based hiring that we're gonna teach you how to make the whole process and we're gonna give you the process, your job is to infuse core values into it, okay? So if you get the ad and Chrissy's like, oh, this might be a place I could have fun and actually make money and people would care about me and, and it'll be a community. I'm, this might be what I'm looking for. And then she shows up to the first interview, which is a group interview and it's not that immediately she's gonna be like, oh, just crushed. So re- everyone understand it's important not just to have a great hiring ad and then bait and switch and have a shitty process and then treat people crappy when we get there. You, I guess you could hire people effectively that way, but they're not gonna stay, right? Like, just like Suzanne and Tracy, if the whole interview process was fun and like, like kind of we run these and they're like, oh, this is gonna be great, I love it. And all I talked about is how much I love you guys and we're gonna serve them. And they got in, I'm like, all right, here's how we're gonna get their money. I don't, and they're like, what about results and helping them? I'm like, screw that, we're just here to collect their money. They'd be like, ah, right? Like they'd find out in a second like this isn't what i signed they'd be gone in, in, in a in a heartbeat so everyone cool with right now we're talking about hiring ad but if you just if you do this and then forget to take to imbue the core values throughout the whole process 
it's a scam, right? You could get, it's just a bunch of hiring and then they'll quit and hiring and they quit. Everyone cool with that? Give me a thumbs up or a finger or a thumbs down. Everyone's cool. Okay. I don't want to beat that horse, but it's so important because so many people see how powerful this is. A bunch of people apply and it kind of gets results right away and they forget to do the rest of it and the results aren't permanent and they go, oh, it doesn't, doesn't work. It only works if you're consistent. You can't promise them this amazing community. And then when they show up, the community sucks, right? That's not, that's not what we're trying to do. two bits of context. So one, there's really two big things we need. Once you've got the foundation of you know your goals and all that stuff, there's really two funnels you need in your business and that's it. One is a client attraction, one's employee attraction. That's the whole enchilada. If you have, and again, the foundation we, we touched on a little bit with core values and good pricing and knowing your customers and kind of knowing how many leads bid sales. So all that foundational stuff, assuming you've got that done, the only other things you need are a client traction funnel and employee traction funnel. That's it. So if it takes you two or three months to get this thing down and God forbid cost you 500 bucks, 800 bucks or something to try, test and figure it out. And you just have a solution to your employee problem forever. You gotta be okay with that. Right? So the problem is some of us have a, literally this one funnel can be worth millions of dollars. Cause you can build a multi-million dollar funnel with, or multi-million dollar business with two funnels, client traction, employee traction. That's it. Once, when we start, we think clients are the big deal. Once we've established a little, we start realizing talents and labor is really the, the, what we're competing for. That's it. So I don't want you to think like, Oh, I gotta get this. And there's 300 other things. There's really not client traction, employee traction. Let me give you one other example. And we'll dive into the data of how your feelings can affect the reality of what's going on. Uh, we'll do it on the, the client side. So you'll go, Oh, that makes sense there. And then you'll be able to see it on the employee side. So the client side, we might have, you know, people come to be like, I had two employees, two customers quit or two, you know, three, whatever the case may be. Right. Um, and they start freaking out. And sometimes there is a reason to freak out. The problem is they just freak out because it feels bad, not because of done any logical thinking. So the, the thinking process I would give you in that is what are your, what is your acceptable expected churn rate for the year? Right. And you might go whatever you pick. So if you're like on, on commercial, maybe it's four clients, depending on the size and all that, whatever, but depending on your size and whether you're commercial or residential, you might say, I'm willing to lose five clients a year, 50 clients a year, right? Obviously the, the more clients you have, the more you're, you're, you're going to lose. So say your number's 10 clients per year, right? You've got 80 clients, you're willing to lose 10 per year, um, which is a little high. If it's April and you lose two, and those are the only two that you've lost, we might be okay, right? If it's January 12th and we lost two, there's probably an issue. So the reason we, we get so emphatic about the, the data versus the feelings versus the facts are if our feelings constantly tell us something's wrong, there will be something wrong sometime and we won't know how to fix it. <laughs> we will just think we'll just, we'll, we'll, we'll release a real problem where we actually need to call the plumber. We'll think that looks like a kink in our hose and we won't know how to respond. So really important when I give you this data, when you feel like I'm going to give up, I'm going to freak out, nothing works, Mike's full of crap. We're going to go to, we're going to just figure out the data and we're going to, I'm going to teach you what you should be on each one. And if you've got a kink in your hose, how to fix it. Everybody okay with that? Yep. Okay, cool. And again, as long as you keep your head straight, it'll be fine. And I know for those of you who know my story, I, when I, I, my first cleaning company, I saved up 10,000 bucks back in the nineties when that was a lot of money. And to me, it felt like all the money in the world. I gave it to this guy to buy a service master commercial cleaning franchise. I think I borrowed another $55,000, which to me was just like a fortune, right? I was born super, super broke and never had that 10 grand was all I'd ever had. And, um, all my employees quit on the first day. So, um, and I, I found out that at like eight in the morning and I was cleaning at five at night till four in the morning. And I was started hiring at the puffer belly restaurant in grand junction, Colorado at 10 AM. I mean, it was awful. So, when I share this stuff with you, you got keep your head, keep your head. I don't want you to be like, yeah, but Mike's rich or he's never had to go with that. Or this is, <laughs> I promise you kids, all this crap I'm telling you to do or ask you to do, I've lost my damn mind and it, it didn't help. Or actually I couldn't even afford to last, lose my mind because I gave all the money I had plus borrowed a bunch of money I'd never seen to get this to work. I had no time to lose my mind. So um, just want to encourage you guys. I know and you're like, well, you don't understand if they don't show up, I'm going to have to clean. Life's gonna be right. Yeah, I'm aware. I clean toilets at four in the morning. Uh, you know, with three more contracts to go a backpack on eight hours behind me and no sleep. So been there, done that, um, feel your pain. All right, let's do this. So here are the, here's the data. Um, first and foremost, depending on the time of year, 
some, if not many of our clients are able to hire all of their hiring needs with no ad spend. So the lead source that we recommend right off the bat is indeed.com. Um, I don't love them, but they're kind of like frenemies with me. They're a little bit of a pain in the butt in terms of what they'll let you put. And they're not, they've got their strengths and their weaknesses. I'm constantly looking for a better thing. So far, I haven't found one. So indeed.com is where I'd start. Uh, I gotta be honest with you. Typically when you've got your hiring funnel working, um, you'll have one to four times a year where it's like, ah, it needs some tweaking, right? It's not just self-running. You gotta go back and, and pick at it a little bit. But once you've got it running, it should pretty much run autonomously. Um, and I'm gonna tell you what you need to do, but it's, two, three, four hours a week of somebody's time. It doesn't have to be yours and the thing just runs. Aside from one to, if it's, if it's breaking more than four or five times a year, you got something wrong. Um, that said, right now, some many of you guys may be aware that the government is paying people effectively to stay home, which makes the, the job market a little tighter. Doesn't mean this won't work, just means you gotta be on your game. So if your hiring funnel is working, this might be one of those times per year anyway, where you gotta tweak on it a little bit. The good news is it's a perfect time to start your hiring funnel. Cause if you get a hiring funnel that works now, and this is the government can't afford to pay people to stay home forever, right? It's gonna, it's gonna be over pretty quick. Um, if you get your hiring funnel working now, when jobs are a little tighter, and when things kind of get back to normal, you're going to be, you're going to be above and beyond. I'd rather you start now when it's harder than you start when it's easier. Think you got it licked. And then something like this happens. You're like, ah, I'm freaking out. You want it reverse. You're like I've got it kind of in a harder environment. And then when things get back to normal, I'm good. And then when things get harder again, you're like, I, I've been through this, no big deal. So just want to let you know, that's the reality of the situation. And if you are competing for talent based on money in a time like this, you're going to lose. Um, if you compete for talent based on core values like we talked about yesterday and you build a community and something special that people want to be a part of um you will you will get the people promise you i've always been able to get for the last 15 years i've been uh, hiring based on core values i've always had all the people i needed they've always been quality everyone else is starving for employees i get good employees and i'm the same exact way i'm going to teach you okay so typically could be a little expensive right now Typically, um, you don't wanna pay more than a dollar to $3 per applicant, okay? So if you're spending 500 bucks a month, um, sure would be nice to get three or 400 applicants, but you might only get 100. But if you get seven, something's horribly wrong, okay? So typically a dollar to $3 in applicants, fair. If you gotta go up to five bucks an applicant nowadays, it's getting a little expensive, but when things are tight, we'll pay a little more, okay? So when you come to me and go, I put an ad up three weeks ago and I've not got anyone. I'm like, how many did you actually get? 26 people. How much did you spend? Zero dollars. Well, that's not your problem. That's not the kink in your hose, right? So again, depending on the stage that you're at, you might only need zero to two people a month. If that's the case, you can spend zero to hundred bucks a month, right? If you consistently need five or 10, you're gonna have to spend more. I've had guys that needed 20 or 30 per month because they're just a really large company. They might spend 1500 bucks a month on applications. That's okay. So a dollar to three bucks per applicant is green. Three to six bucks is yellow. Anything above six bucks is, is red. Okay, so a dollar three bucks per applicant. If you suck at this, you might, and just assume if you're just starting, assume you suck and give yourself complete permission. Be like, I'm okay sucking. That's just fine. You might need a hundred applicants to get one higher. Okay. Um, that's not great. <laughs> that's not where we want to stay. I just want to tell you that at the beginning. So if it happens, you're like, yep, I'm just starting. It's okay if I suck at this, right? When you get pretty good at it, you might get that down to 30 or 40 applicants per hire. Okay. So if, um, so kind of when you're figuring out money, that'll help you. All right, here's another key thing that we get, and this is probably where most people get hung up. Um, let me give you the overreaching, and I forgot to show you where we are in the system, but the overreaching overview of the system is we're gonna do a hiring ad, which we did yesterday, to um, depending on how many we need, we can do organic traffic, which is just us personally posting on Facebook, telling our friends, sending it to them, email lists, whatever, or paid traffic, which would be Indeed, ZipRecruiter, Facebook, you know, there's lots and lots of places you can pay to send traffic to your ad. Um, you're gonna go from ad, the call to action the ad is going to be to apply. Um, you're gonna have an automated system that, um, takes your application and invites them to a group interview. That group interview is in the same time, uh, the day of the week and place every week. And you can have an automated follow-up system with ideally texts, emails. You can even do an automated voicemail um, saying, hey, Brian, 
or you can't say their name because it's automated. Hey, it's Mike. Uh, saw that you applied. Absolutely approved. Or we're going to be doing an interview Monday at the Starbucks at Fifth and Main. Two o'clock. Be there. There's going to be coffee. There's going to be sugar. It's going to be awesome. If you're about having fun, making money, being real, and helping out, you're not going to want to miss this. It's going to be awesome. See you there. Um, something like that. So red is anything less than 10% of people showing up. So that's where people freak out, right? So if you get, you put out, and the good news is with the hiring ad that you you should have done yesterday, you'll get applicants. I, if you don't, something's horribly wrong, but you will get applicants, you'll get good applicants. 10%, if 10% come, we're, that's not a kink in your hose, right? So if you're like, I got 70 applicants this week for my, for my interview, um, and then, nine people show up, people freak out. Oh my gosh, blah, 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 blah. It's okay. As long as it's 10% or above. And we've got people getting 30 and 40%, right? So again, 10 is not great, but if it's above 10%, that's not a kink in the hose. We're going to keep looking, right? Even though our minds are going to lie to us and go, Samuel, Hilma, Aaron, no, no, no. You had 50 people and only two, only five showed up. Everything's horribly wrong. That's not horribly wrong. Um, Typically 20 to 50% of the interviewees should start. And when, I think I mentioned this in, in previous days, when you're first starting at this, one in three will stay more than 90 days. And when you get good at it, two and three will stay. If you plan on, I need three people, so I'll hire three people, you're gonna be upset. <laughs> you might get lucky and that might work once, but it won't work every time, I can promise you. So um, everyone, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna hit it again really quick. One to three dollars per applicant is green. Three to six bucks is yellow. Anything above six, seven bucks per applicant is pretty freaking expensive. We're in the red. Um, if you're really good at this process and you've done it, you've got it down, you might only need 30 to 50 applicants uh, to get one higher. If you're just starting, it might take you close to 100 applicants to get a higher. Good news is if you follow the system we teach with 100 applicants, you dag daggum well should get one, at least one good candidate in there. Um, this is when I would circle because this is what people miss and freak out on me the most. Um, as long as 10% or more of the people that apply for your job show up for the first group interview, you're good to go. If you're hiring 20 to 50% of the interviewees, that's fine. And you're like, that's a big range. Again, when you're starting, you're, you're not honing in as well. It might be 20%. When you get better, you might get up to 50%. Um, if you're keeping one in three, I'd start uh, for the, for, for 90 days, I, my goal would be two and three, right? But we're not going to plan. If we need five employees, we're not going to hire plan on hiring five people. We're going to plan on hiring seven people knowing that between one and three and two and three, depending on how good we are at this is going to stick. So if there's a kink, I'm going to go through each one and go, if this isn't working, if you're like, well, I'm, I'm red, I'm yellow, I'm not in where I should be. What do I do? <laughs> we'll go through each one. So if you're over one to three dollars per applicant or at really over six dollars per applicant because that would be out of the yellow um you want more organic um the best and your next best employee is probably good friends with your current best employee um when you're just starting good people tend to hang out with good people again suzanne and sean married right i would be shocked not that every spouse is going to be a good fit for your your company but i would be shocked if knowing what I know about Sean, I met Suzanne and she was like a loser and had a bad attitude. You know what I'm saying? Like it wasn't surprising that her um, core value match was there. It was just, a, we got lucky that she had a skill set that we needed, but the core value match was like, obviously Sean's not going to marry someone that's not a high caliber lady. Um, and I know Suzanne's not going to marry someone that's not a high caliber dude. So it <laughs> worked out well for everybody. Um, okay. So if your application cost is high, um, test new sources, look for more organic sources. And again, it can be anywhere from emailing your list. If you have a list, um, putting ads in more specific places with less competition, local places for me, when I was, uh, last time I had kind of more minimum wage workers, uh, was my construction company in Phoenix. Uh, I found personally for me in the Phoenix area, Hispanic workers were amazing. We hired a lot of people. We, our particular job didn't need English speaking. Um, so we find people that only spoke Spanish that would kind of get taken advantage of, I feel, by other people because they didn't speak English. And we treated them with the love and respect that they deserved and, and core values match. They freaking loved it. So we put ads in Hispanic. We put ads in Spanish, even though I don't speak Spanish, um, in Hispanic only um, places that were cheaper and we get a lot more return. Okay. So if you're if you're paying more than, you know, three to six bucks per applicant, um, you're going to want to find more organic ways to do it. If you are not hiring 30 to uh, 30 to hundred applicants per hire, most people don't have a problem with that. So we're going to move on. That typically just means you're 
interviewing and you're, you're putting ads in the wrong place, right? So if you're like, I had a hundred applicants, they all sucked. The, your ad probably is broken. If you use the ad we talked about yesterday, it won't be broken or you're putting it in the complete wrong place, right? Stupid thing. When I had my cleaning company, I found, again, this isn't for everybody. It's just a guideline I found, but you want to start seeing this so you can, you can, tighten up your funnel for me personally, um, college kids, not a good fit, which is funny because I was college age. So it's, <laughs> it's, it is what it is, right? If they're working for beer money, they would quit, right? It's just, that's just how it was for me, men that had, uh, and I had a commercial company, so it, it's going to be, it can be different for residential, um, uh, men who had full-time jobs and wanted supplemental income for their part-time jobs and they had wives and kids at home were the best. So again, that's probably going to be the true for 60, 70% of you guys that have commercial companies. It's not that I'm trying to tell you that I want you to start looking for demographics of, you know, is, am I saying that no college kid ever is a good employee? No, that would be insane. Am I saying every male with a wife and kids at home that had a primary job is going to be a great employee? No, that would be equally insane. But I will tell you when college kids come in, I'd put them through the ringer a little more. I'd, want, I'd, I'd ask more questions. When guys who were married with kids at home, I'd, I'd look a little closer and try a little harder to make sure that we, we gave them every opportunity. So I want you to start identifying uh, what works for you. All right, 10% of applicants uh, should, should uh, interview. So if you're getting less than that, right? Say you had 50 or 60 applicants uh, in your funnel and only two show up to your, your group interview, the, the follow-up funnel is the problem, right? We're not texting enough, we're not texting the right message. Oftentimes the message can be different than the hiring ad, which is bad. Anytime you have an ad, the next thing needs to be in line. Like we teach when it's on client attraction, if I have an ad that looks like this, you know, if I, if I say, Hey, pictures of kittens, you know, fun, fun, fun kitten videos, click here and they click here and I try and sell them something, they're going to be pissed. And I'm not going to have a, a good conversion rate. But if I say, are you looking to make more money? And then they click and I give them some sort of offer to make more money. The conversion rate is going to be make more sense. Right? So same with you, if you're hiring as super core values, but then your follow-up sequence is super boring and doesn't fit your core values, that's going to hurt your conversion rate. Right? So you want to make sure your text, your emails, your voicemail, whatever you're doing to follow up with them um, is in line with what you're doing. You want to make sure it's somewhere that they're reading, right? So if your people don't have smartphones or they don't check their email, you, you've got to make sure whatever your fo automated follow-up sequence um, is doing, the message is right and your people are getting the message. It's clear, stupid stuff like someone's like, put the wrong address in accidentally, there's a typo. Well, obviously that's going to hurt the conversion rate. They don't know, what, they know where they're going, right? Um, so when you, less than 10% of the people are coming, check your funnel, right? The way that you're following up with them, the messaging you're following up with them, or sometimes just the data is flat out wrong. That's typically the, the way to unkink that hose. Um, and then the people starting is again, an indi indicative of the caliber of, of, of applicant you're getting. So if nobody's starting, check your ad and check where you're putting it. And then again, one to three or two to three starting has a lot to do with your starting process. That's further in the funnel. We're not gonna be able to cover it here, but how you show up throughout the whole funnel, right? Like we talked about yesterday, if the ad's really good and the group interview is really good, but the one-on-one -on -one interview sucks. And then when they show up to do their working interview and the guy working next to them is not a core values match at all, they're gonna be like, they're gonna be totally disconnected. We wanna use data. So if you're seven, 17 days in and you haven't gotten results again, sometimes it takes 90 days. It's okay. If you're 91 days in, but you kind of focused on it for a week or two, and then you took a month off and you came back for a week. When I say 90 days, typically it can take you actually running the funnel and, and tweaking and making it a little better, a little better. Sometimes people are like, Oh my gosh, my first group interview, I had four or five people show up. I hired two of them. It was great. Sometimes people be like, I had my first interview. I only had 17 applicants. No one showed up. That's okay right? That's you were there. It's okay. The biggest roadblock or mistake I see people making consistently is this thing works like gangbusters. We've done this over and over and they finally get it working and it crushes it. They'll be like, holy crap, I need one or two people a week or a month and I'll have four or five or six people I could hire with this funnel. So I turn it off. And then guys, gals, for those of you that are new in cleaning, people quit in bunches, right? If you have a team of six, once or twice a year, if two or three or four people all quit in the same week or two, it's not ideal. And it shows that we probably need to work a little more on our core values or our culture, but that's not like insane. Like for, a, and again, I'm not in the cleaning business. We have a coaching company. I'd be shocked if that happened with the team that we've got now. I've never had that happen, not in the cleaning business, but in the cleaning business, 
it's not uncommon. So the biggest mistake you can make is when this starts working, go, Oh, I can turn it off. And it's fine to dial up and down your budget. That's another thing I want to encourage y'all to do. If what would you pay in a year? If you're like, I'll never have to worry about cloud. I'll always have all the employees I need till the end of time. What would you pay in a year? Most of you would be like, I'd pay five, 10 grand, 20 grand, right? If, if, if I had all the employees I needed, but then we turn down the budget. So if one month or even two months out of the year, even if you only need to hire 20 or 30 people or 40 people in a year, um, if one or two months you have to spend 800 bucks or 1200 bucks and it feels insane, don't do the math like that's 15 grand a year. Some months you might spend nothing, right? So it's okay to dial up and down your, your budget so you have more or less traffic in your funnel, we never turn it off, right? We always have a group interview every week, don't. And I'm tr trust me, I've heard all, well, I'll do it every other week, I'll do the, there's always a reason to do it, and it never works, it always blows up in the face. So just make sure you do the, the, it every week, we're always hiring, and it is a lie from the pit of hell, when your monkey brain is telling you, I can't have an interview if I don't know exactly what I'm gonna hire and who I'm gonna do and what they're gonna do and have 40 hours of work waiting for them. If I don't have that, I can't start interviewing. If that's your mindset, you're gonna be scu rude. If you have a cleaning company, you either need someone now or you're gonna need someone next two or three weeks, I promise you. And it takes a couple of weeks to get someone on. So never, ever, 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 ever stop hiring. That's. That's a big one. Here's the action items. One, figure out with the math we did, how many applicants, interviews, and starts you need to hit your goals. So we're gonna work backwards. I'll do a quick math. If So let's just say we need two employees, right? Um, by the end of the month. Some of you guys will be more, some will be less, I get that. If I'm just starting, I'm gonna be like, I'm gonna hire four, just to be sure, right? Because, and guess what? If we hire four, planning on two to leave and two to stay, and only one leaves, and we have a bonus employee, I don't think y'all yell at me, it'll be okay, right? So now we know we need four. If we're like, we need four, I'm gonna go, you know, based on the numbers I gave you, we might need, say, a third of the, the interviewees, people that show up, we actually start. Well, that means I need 12 interviewees, right, for my first interview, and then that'll matriculate with the second and third interview down to, to four that actually start. And if you're like, I'm gonna go worst case scenario, 100 applicants or 10% uh, uh, 10 10 of my applicants are gonna show up for the interview. If I need 12 people to show up for the interview, that's 120 applicants. Does that make sense? Um, and again, with with organic traffic, you can spend no money to get 120. You just have, it's either time or money, by the way, for whether whether you're trying to get customers or employees, there's lots of free ways to get employees to look at to go through your funnel, look at your hiring ad, ad and all that stuff. Would they just take time? Or you can give Indeed or Facebook a bunch of money and they'll just do it for you. So same with marketing. When people are like, should I telemarket? Should I cold call? Should I, what, it's time or money, kids. <laughs> There's, you, you can pay someone to do a bunch of work, you can do it yourself. So I'm okay with either, but figure out, I'm gonna commit X amount of time to get this 120 applicants over the next month, or I'm just gonna throw 500 bucks at it and that should do it, right? So we're gonna start with how many people we need to keep then we're gonna reverse engineer to how many I need to hire to get that many to stay. And then we're gonna reverse engineer to go, okay, how many need to show up for the first interview for me to hire the people I need? And then how many applications do I need to get people to show up on that interview? And then how much time or money do I need to spend to get that many applicants to come in? Once you've done it a couple times, you'll be able to go through it. So step one is figure out how many employees you need. So, and you can probably go through till the end of the month, the next 30 days, however you wanna do it. But just like that next level uh, client we had that needed six and on the 20th, she's like, I've only got four, I'm freaking out. I'm like, you're right on track, right? Had she not had a goal of what she needed, she could have just freaked out. She wouldn't know she's on or off track. So really important for you to get the numbers of, and here's just like Tracy said, it's okay if you have your, I'm gonna spend this much money and get this many applicants and get this many people to show up for the interview and this many to start and this many to stick. And then a month from now you look back and go, whoo, wasn't even close, <laughs> right? Um, at least you've got a baseline. And in the program, we have a, a spreadsheet to track this. It's not a complex spreadsheet. You can make one of your own, right? Um, um, so track how many applicants interview starts show up and just pro forma it out. Like, here's what I say is going to happen over the next month. And then once you track it, you'll have data. So you're like, I thought 10% were going to show up. Actually 20 showed up, or I thought see, whatever you thought you can replace with actual data as you start tracking. I always want to just give you guys extra value. And again, if nobody does anything, it will all have been wasted. But if all this extra value gets you guys to get out of cleaning and go from cleaner to owner and really 
be the entrepreneur that if you ask me, God created you to be, I really feel like we are put on the source to do something special. And if you're here, you've invested the time. It's not very much money, but time is substantial to do this. God didn't put you on the earth to be an employee and there's nothing wrong with employees. I love employees. I've been an employee for people that that's what they're supposed to do. If this is who you are and this is what you're supposed to do, nothing more heartbreaking. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you've got a kid that's kind of fat and slow and wants to play video games, that's okay. But if you've got a kid that's a premier athlete and this gifted ability and, and he wants to sit at home play, you know, video games, you're like, that's not, you've got this beautiful gift. So my belief is if you are here, there's a reason, right? This is something that's important to you. So I really, really want to encourage you. These action items are the magic.